I talk today. Uh, first of all, thank you for in inviting me um, to the Jamstack Boston meetup. Uh, really nice to get a chance to meet all you guys, and hopefully you guys will invite me back another time, or I'll uh, join and listen to some more talks. Um, my talk is about giving love to your X with the headless CMS and Jamstack. And of course, I'm talking about the X here. Um, I am talking about the editor experience. I am not talking about uh, your ex partner. Um, my name is James Vidler. I'm the VP of product and operations here at Agility CMS. Um, my background um, was in web development. Um, actually started building stuff on CMSs uh, about 10 years ago um, and then moved to Agility and uh, I've been leading the, the product team there since um, and uh, have sort of been at the helm with trying to um, really sort of ride the wave a little bit on, on, on Jamstack because we saw Jamstack as a really great way to, um, to build sites that are using a headless API because it just solves so many problems immediately if you build things the right way. Um, cause for a long time, we actually found that, you know, we, we've been a headless CMS now since like 2008 and, you know, we had a lot of customers who were building like traditional server rendered sites using our APIs and then you know, they would um, um, they would either make you know, a whole bunch of API calls on every single page request, or sometimes they'd look up to some external database or some other slow volatile resource um, where it's like when something bad happens, their site either goes down or um, uh, or it's just like brutally slow. So the idea of having a static state generator actually just solves all those problems sort of out of the box. But then it introduces, you know, a whole bunch of other problems, which, you know, um, Sam pointed out some, and I'll point out some uh, some in my talk as well. Um, just to give you guys a, bit, uh, a little bit tidbit about Agility, if you haven't heard about us um, uh, before, um, we, <laughs> we're a startup um, and we are um, from Toronto, Canada. And like I said, I've been around since about 2008. Um, we actually, I don't know if this is the case anymore. We were the only headless CMS that built in page management. Some other propriety ones have now started to copy us. Um, we built Agility over the course of about a, a decade by developers. Um, we're big enough for billion dollar brands. Uh, and we really still are small enough to care about each and every user. Um, just a few of, of our customers that use Agility CMS. Um, just wanted to highlight the some logos here. A lot of these are actually big Canadian ones. Uh, there's some uh, some American companies in here too, like McKesson, uh, Mitsubishi Electric, Visit Orlando, uh, and many, many more. So uh, Agility's vision, the whole reason why I'm here talking to you today is, is um, you know, we are headless CMS at, at the base of it, right? Um, and we believe in a world where you never have to rebuild your website from scratch. And what I mean by that is that you can build um, a content model and a content foundation that can sort of stand the test of time. You know, we've had customers that have been on our platform for, you know, over 10 years and their back end, like their content models have not changed much. They, they change a little bit, um, but they generally still have the same pieces of content in place, but their front end, you know, they revamp them like every, every year or every couple of years. Um, and it's just able to save them so much time. So that's our vision is where we can take the world where you never have to rebuild your site from scratch. And uh, it's not a huge undertaking every single time. Um, and we believe that success of our customers really depend on three, uh, three experiences, the three axes. Um, number one, obviously, I think, you know, everyone can agree here. It's going to be the user experience first. Um, you know, the whole reason why we build the website is to get users to actually use it and do the things they want to do, get conversions, all that fun stuff. Um, user experience is key. Um, secondary, um, I believe the editor experience is, is the second most important thing here. And that's important because if, you're, if your editors can't actually manage the content properly that's on their website, then they're just gonna stop updating stuff or they won't put in as much effort um, or it'll cause more friction or they'll get more other developers to do it for them and all that kind of stuff. So it's really critical to have a great editor experience which actually helps drive that sort of user experience. And then lastly, the developer experience. Uh, yes, sorry to tell everyone, but we're usually the last ones people think of um, <laughs> when it comes to you know how to build a great website and how things should work. Um, but it's also really important. And that's sort of the uh, triangle, if, if you will, of the experiences that um, if you nail all three of them, you can get a really good solution. If you kind of miss the mark on some of them, you're never really gonna be quite happy. So uh, let's go through just like a quick, uh, really high level 
oversimplified um, history of the web, right? So when the web, when the web first started off, um, you know, it was really common just to actually have static sites at that time, you know, just regular old, you know, HTML with tables upon tables upon tables upon tables of stuff. <laughs> Um, and then there, you know, then the service came around and says, okay, wouldn't it be great if we could, you know, dynamically return different content based on the request coming in, you know, and that's great. Um, so when you're looking at a, a typical website, that's like, okay, you, there's, there's no CMS. Um, it's just a straight, simple website. Um, the, you can actually build a really great user experience with no CMS. The CMS doesn't really impact the user experience all that much. Um, and developers tend to like building websites without CMSs. Uh, because they have full control over exactly what kind of code, how, how everything's going to look. Um, but of course, you know, if you build a website without a CMS, there is no editor experience. Editors cannot manage the content. They have to contact you. Um, and I think, um, you know, as Sam had mentioned it in his talk, um, that like that is really a big problem with like static sites with no CMS being implemented with them is you're kind of leaving editors out, out of the water here. So the overall experience, not so great. Now let's look at a sort of more traditional CMS, and um, you know Drupal, for example, uh, it would be in this list. Same thing as like WordPress or um, Sitecore, one of the more enterprise um, ones out there. Um, and you know those typically run on uh, I don't want to say older or legacy, but other server side languages like PHP and, and like ASP.NET. And Sam is right; these things do a great job out of the box. Like they give like an amazing editor experience, um, probably the best out of pretty much anything you can do here because they can do so much themselves and can actually build great things uh, without requiring a developer. Um, yes, there are, you know, security stuff and all that everything, but I won't, I won't really get into that here. Um, but let's look at the user experience, right? What can happen over time is if, you know, with great, there's always that saying with great power comes great responsibility. And, um, I think everyone's seen websites that have gone through the ringer <laughs> over time um, of people doing stuff, installing plugins, mishmashing things together without really fully understanding what that's doing to your website, you know, um, how that's affecting your, your page speed score, um, how your design elements no longer look the same, um, all those sort of things. So, you know, if that's not implemented really well and, you know, people are, and, and you don't have someone who's like really looking over that entire solution, the user experience over time can really suffer because parts of the site will just look dated. Some will look newer than others. It's really hard to keep in, keep uh, keep up to date without having some developers involved in some way, shape, or form. Um, and the developer experience in these kind of solutions, you know, aren't that great. Um, yes, they require you to learn PHP. And something wrong with PHP or or, or .NET. Um, but it's tough, man. Like you gotta you gotta find a developer who is really comfortable in those in those scenarios. Um, and then they're even constricted and constrained in what they can actually do in those systems, like what templates they can use, what programming languages they can use. Um, so it's kind of an uh, under, underwhelming experience for the developer. And I really think that's why um, static site generation and headless CMSs have really become very popular for developers because it solves a lot of those problems for them. So enter, you know, um, a typical Jamstack solution these days. You're looking at a website, you're integrating it with a headless CMS, uh, and it's so working with Jamstack. So, you know, some other names out there aside from Agility CMS, you've got like Contentful, Prismic, um, you've got Jamstack frameworks like Gatsby, Next.js, Nuxt, and it seems like there's a new one popping up every few months. Um, and so here we've got a really good developer experience because, you know, let's be frank, developers essentially uh, drove for this change. So obviously we like it. We have to like it because we can deliver really, really great user experiences using these sort of modern technologies and this modern stack and all these tools that come with it. But they're able to take advantage of all those things. Um, however, you know, as, as Sam mentioned, and I, and I will agree, the editor experience often gets uh, left behind, right? Um, they don't get all those things out of the box that they used to get with Drupal. And, you know, um, there was a list of features and things that I, I think I think I have in my next slide here. But yeah, like what's wrong with Jamstack? What's wrong with the editor experience in, in Jamstack? Um, these are my five top complaints. And then I actually I have a, a, a Sam slide in here too that I want to talk about. Um, so the, the number one top complaint that editors have with a, um, like, let's just, let's look at an example where let's say you built a Next.js site 
and it's using a headless CMS. Um, the number one issue that a lot of people have is like, oh, I can't preview content updates in real time. So an editor is going to go in, in the CMS, they're going to make some updates. Um, usually CMSs, uh, like Drupal obviously has this, um, Agility CMS has this as well, the ability to preview content, right? There's a preview button in the CMS. You hit preview, that's going to open up a web page and show you that web page with that content change you just made. Um, the problem is, is in a static site, you know, they have to wait for a rebuild to happen for that content to actually update in that preview environment. And that can take time. It can take, you know, 30 seconds, could take a minute. In extreme cases, it could take like 10 minutes or e even even more. Um, so they can't preview contents in real time. Not only that, but they often have really limited control over uh, controlling what pages are actually on their sitemap. Um, they trouble creating a page, um, you know, a, a deleting a page, redirecting pages, all these things that, again, edit, editors need to have full control of. Um, they are a little limited in what they can do. And not only about the pages themselves, but what is on each page, they often are limited to what they can control. Because usually what happens is um, a developer will build the Next.js site and just sort of like scaffold out all of the pages in the page tree sort of in code and then control what sort of data components go on which. And then yes, they might make a, a data query to go and pull in content, but the developer is really dictating what pieces are gonna be on that page. So like now we've tipped the scales where it's like editors really have no control over this. And the developers have full control over this. Um, and they're not so happy about that. Um, and that really leads to inconsistent and inefficient content workflows. Because now it takes editors longer time to preview stuff. It takes them longer to publish stuff. It takes them longer to actually get their, get their job done. Um, and then when they publish it, you know, it can take long. Again, you can go through a build process. And um, no matter how many times you explain it to people, they are never really going to understand or care about the concept of builds. They're just going to be like, why can't it just happen immediately? <laughs> um, so this really leaves them feel feeling powerless. Um, and then this was the slide that I, I took from, from Sam's talk. Um, he was saying that um, you know certain things are hard to do with static sites. And yeah, I agree. Like, you know, if you're going with a static site, uh, generator, you you are making that decision to say, okay, me as a developer, I am going to build the site that's going to do all these things. I'm going to build this code that does that does all these things. Which means you need to actually build that into your logic, right? Um, you can you can certainly handle domain path domain paths and stuff in in, in a multilingual site, a static site. Um, but you got to plan it around it, right? You got to set up, okay, how are these routes going to work? The language codes in the URL, how am I going to generate these, these pages under that language, et cetera? Um, multiple editors. Now, the thing is, um, I'm talking about a static site that's integrated with a headless CMS. So the headless CMS you know, has a concept of multilingual, multiple content editors, content drafts, image editing, content moderation, uh, URL redirections. Um, not inline editing. <laughs> so all of these features are typically available in most headless CMSs, including Agility CMS. But you're right, it's hard to, you know, yeah, as a developer, you have to decide to implement a lot of those sort of features directly in your actual um, website source code. Um, and that's one of the things we actually first did when we sort of started uh, embracing Jamstack was we built starters to show users, hey, here's how things work out of the box. And, you know, we know how to do multilingual stuff. So here's a plugin that does multilingual for you and just handles all the paths for you automatically. Um, so we do stuff like that to make that a little bit easier to try to, so that developers don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time they're building a website. Um, so like our Gatsby plugin handles multilingual out of the box. Uh, so does our Next.js one and our starter. So if you are curious to see how we do that, um, check out agilitycms.com and we have a, a, a starter page where we have a bunch of examples of how to do this stuff in frameworks. Um, but my point is, uh, I digress, <laughs> we can do better uh, as, as developers here to really um, enable uh, editors to really like the, the Jamstack as much as we do. So here's how, and you know, it's not that difficult, um, and, I'll, and I'll show you. So number one, you absolutely, absolutely need to give them a preview environment. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about this. Um, I've seen some developers build solutions even on Agility CMS where they build a site with Gatsby and you know, they just don't give the editors a preview environment. And I was like, well, how, how do you expect your editors to be happy if they can't preview anything? Um, and I'm not talking about doing a whole, you know, brand new um, deployment with, a, with like a, a build every single time you preview content. That's also uh, really redundant. You want to give them a very, very quick preview experience. 
Um, number two, you want to give them the gift of page management. So you need to allow editors to fully control every single page that's in, that's in their page tree and what is on each page, including things like URL redirections. If you're not doing that, your, your editors aren't going to be very happy with you. And then number three, when they publish content, it needs to be fast, as fast as possible, so that when they publish it, they can go open a browser, see that content has changed, and move on to the next thing that they need to do. So let's talk about one of the ways you can do this. And there are several different ways to do this now with, with different frameworks. But let's look at Next.js, Vercel as a hosting provider, um, and Agile CMS as the headless CMS. I call this the nav stack. Uh, I'm hoping that takes off. It hasn't yet, but we'll see. <laughs> Um, so quick recap, what is Next.js? Next.js is a React framework um, that was originally built to do like server-side rendering uh, with a Node.js backend, uh, which was then sort of morphed a little bit to do static site generation. Um, it's a really powerful platform because you can because you can sort of like run it in a static mode or like a hybrid server-side rendered mode. And then plus, if you host it on Vercel, it kind of goes behind a CDN. So like you get all these really weird benefits and it's almost like, is it even Jamstack anymore? Uh, I, I think it is, but it's like, You'll, you'll see <laughs> when I get into it. Um, Agility SMS, you know what that is. Um, that's a headless content management system. Um, and Vercel is the hosting platform that is actually um, uh, built by the same people who built the Next.js project. Um, and I think is the best site to host any Next.js project. So preview. Um, and you're like, wait, yeah, isn't this a static site? How do you preview you know, static HTML? Um, well. I mean, it works like this. This is what the experience is for an editor. Editors in the CMS, they click preview. Essentially what happens is a preview cookie is set when that Next.js site is deployed on Vercel. And it tells Vercel, say, hey, this incoming request, don't give them the static HTML that's pre-built. Instead, run it in a server-side rendered mode so they can get that, get that, get that page updating in real time. Um, so the editor goes into the CMS, they make a content change, they hit preview, and they can see exactly what it is um, before they go ahead to actually publish it. So summary page request comes in. Vercel or the Next.js framework really just says, OK, is this a preview request? Does it have the cookie I want? Um, if it is in preview mode, it actually runs that page as like a serverless function at runtime. So you get that content refreshing immediately. Uh, and then if not, no, you get the return, like the, the, the cached HTML from the static build. So um, let me just co co do a quick demo of this, actually. Um, so here I've got, um, this is the Agility CMS here, uh, the interface that we're in. And uh, this is just a really simple, um, uh, this is the, the back end for the front end of this site, which is just a really basic blog. Um, you can see here we've got uh, you know, two listed blogs here at the top, um, you know, a couple other pages here um, with some random stuff. Now you'll see here at the top, uh, just for convenience, we actually just al allow you, because again, this is just a starter, to actually just enter preview mode automatically from, from the website. So it's like, okay, I want to actually preview this site now. So what this is doing is it's now loading my site in preview mode. And you'll see here, we just have a bit of a state change here saying that uh, we're now previewing latest changes. And if I go back to my homepage here, I go back into uh, agility, um, I'm going to go and uh, find my home page, and I'm going to go ahead and just click on my home page here in my pages tree. And I'm going to go ahead and click on this thing that says, you know, text block with image. And so I'm just going to make a update here. Hit save. And then I'm going to actually just go back here. And actually, if I just, uh, oh, actually, I'll, I'll do the actual experience. So I hit preview from the CMS, because that's what editors will, will do. So they're going to click preview. And all of a sudden there, you can see that that is updated. Uh, and what happened is I didn't wait. I didn't have to wait for a full rebuild in Vercel to happen. Vercel is just running in, just running the site in preview mode right now for my particular session. So this works nearly identical to a traditional CMS now at, at this point. Um, now you're going to say, OK, well, what happens if you publish? How long does that take? Well, I'll go ahead and hit publish on this. 
well, that is processing. Um, I'm just going to uh, view live mode here so I can go back to get out of my preview mode. And this is published. I'm just gonna refresh the page. And you can see that my published version of this page now has my little, my little education hat that I have in there. So we were able to do a lot of things there. Preview, publish, all without full rebuilds. Fast. Um, and so you must be asking, okay, well, this must be like difficult to set up or something. No, it, it's, it's really not, trust me. Um, sign up for Agility CMS. Um, when, you, when you actually, if you just go to our website, uh, you go down to starters. Uh, you'll see here, we've got several different starters uh, to choose from here. Uh, the next one I really like, um, so you can go ahead and, and if I, uh, <laughs> there we go, <laughs> if my page works there. Um, and you can go ahead and hit just the start free project. This will actually uh, create an agility instance for you for the starter. Um, and then you can actually just click a deploy button to deploy to your cell and, and that's it. Um, so it's really straightforward. I suggest that you check that out. Um, the next thing I want to talk a little bit about is like page management, right? So, all right, so we get in the preview environment, I'm going to get in the ability to quickly publish stuff. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about here is page management. So, um, the, and that's key, right? You need, editors need to be able to control what pages are in their page tree um, and how they control it. So the best way to explain this to developers is, is what is not page management. <laughs> so I've seen so many like Jamstack starters that like you open up the pages like tree pages folder and you have all these like static pages in here. Um, you know, that's not really how most websites work. Most websites are tend to get implemented with a CMS and the editors control the pages. So if you open up a page structure in here uh, as a developer and you see stuff like this, this is not page management. This means you're dictating with the pages, not the editors. Uh, another thing that is not page management is when developers dictate what components are actually on a page. Um, so let's say you have an about us page and you say, yeah, the about us page is going to have these things on here. The, you're completely giving like, e and even though an editor might be able to control you know, the slides that are in the image slider or the text that's in the, the contact us blurb, you're not giving them any control to change the layout of that page at all. So again, wh why does this matter? Editors feel constrained. Um, you know, we do have to empathize with them, put yourself in their shoes. Um, you know, if someone were to tell you as a developer, Hey, you can only build certain types of pages with predefined layouts, you wouldn't be all that happy about it. Um, in fact, that sounds a lot like developers experience working in like traditional CMS land. They felt constrained. It's the same reasons why they didn't like traditional CMS. Still not convinced? Uh, if, if you keep doing stuff like that, uh, this will be you responding to change requests because you're not giving your editors enough control over their content. So uh, I urge you to stop building websites and build tools instead. Build components and then get your editors to compose what components actually go on that page. Um, I briefly showed you guys here. Um, don't want to spend too much time here. I'm just conscious of time, but. Um, this is really what I mean by page management, right? Is when an editor can come in here, they can see all the pages they have in here. And Agility has a concept of page modules. So these are actually the front end components that correspond to code. And uh, one of the other things that came up here that, uh, that Sam had mentioned here is like, you know, maybe a headless CMS is good enough. Um, all they have to deal with things like content previews. So, we're dealing with content previews here. We showed that we can handle that. Um, replicating CMS navigation, menus, and paths, that shouldn't be a problem too with, with, with a headless CMS. Um, you know, For example, with one like ours, do we have an API to get the entire sitemap, um, um, as well as you know, build menus off of the sitemap, for example. Um, and caching discrepancies. So um, I showed that that wasn't a problem there on the preview and publish when you've got that sort of set up with, with Next.js. And I just want to drive the point home that um, Jilly CMS, we think that we have a content methodology and we think there are really two types of content here. I've talked a little bit about page management, um, but there's really two types of content. There's content that's like specific to a page, which is like a component, right? That your components, that are, those visual components that are on the page, but then you're also going to have content that is not specific to a page and is really shared across, you know, multiple pages on the site or even totally different things like, uh, 
like, you know, digital signage or, you know, IOT devices or apps, that kind of thing. Content that is, you know, not even for the website at all, or could be shared across multiple properties. So um, you might ask yourself, well, well, what is a page like in, 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 in Jilly land? Like what, what is a page? Um, we think a page is, you know, a page essentially has a title. It's got a URL slug. It's got some SEO properties. And then you've kind of got like an associated page template. And the page template defines, um, as I'm in our system here, this is, uh, this is using a page template that has a defined content zone called the main content zone, which is just one content zone. And this is the area where editors can just add these components. And as developers, you end up building these components that editors can add to their pages. So this is ex an example of um, a content zone with a few modules that are on them. So when you request a um, when you request a page object from our API, you get an object of content zones, which then just lists all the different modules that are in each one, as well as all the fields and data that is in each module. Um, and then, of course, we don't just have modules. Uh, page module content, we also just have general content um, here. So if I look at a list of here called blog posts, you know, this is be something more typical that you might find in a lot of other headless CMS solutions is you just got, you know, content lists of things um, that have structured content that aren't really specific to a page and can be shown pretty much anywhere. So page templates and page modules, those really are really always going to correspond to an actual like front end component you actually have in your code. So an example here, this is an example of React, where it's like, okay, I have a I have a one column template that that uh, um, is is a React component which has a div, and you know I'm going to give it a name, main content zone, and I'm going to pass the properties, which is you know all the modules that I have that want to render on that content zone, and all the data that's along with those. And modules are the functional components that actually make up your page. And they can have their own fields too, but they can also link to like other content that is um, shared across multiple pages or multiple different websites or that kind of thing. It can always link to um, other content that is shared. And, and modules themselves are just like React components as well. They're things that are gonna be output there. They have a set of props and those props uh, typically are the field data that is attached to those modules. And then you may also make some additional API calls to grab some other data uh, from Agility or some other system to also uh, display in the module as well. Uh, in all of our starters, we actually handle all the sort of page routing and uh, you know and data lookups for you. <laughs> so it's like by default, uh, you know, I could actually go uh, go in here, I could go ahead and just add a page, add a module, and it'll just work out of the box and it'll render, as long as it can find um, a React component um, that represents essentially the same name of the thing I've added to a page, it'll actually just work. So again, all you have to do as developers, is you just, now you're just building page templates and modules and then you're letting your editors just piece, piece everything together, let them preview it, and then let them publish content. So. How does publishing working? Well, that one's actually really straightforward too. I actually just demoed it. Editor clicks publish from the CMS. User navigates to the page they just published in the browser. They refresh it. Um, in the background, Vercel actually regenerates as the HTML in the background. And then the next request that comes will actually, uh, you'll actually get that updated content. Or if you wait long enough, it'll, it'll also uh, update automatically. Um, so no builds and publishing and previewing is super fast. Um, so if this sounds interesting to you, I do highly recommend you guys check out our Next.js starter. Um, it's connected to, uh, to a sample instance that has everything you need. Um, it utilizes the get static props function from Next.js to allow full static site generation. Um, it supports full page management with built-in routing, supports preview mode out of the box, and it uses the revalidate tag with Vercel to enable incremental static rebuilds, which uh, is really cool. Um, one thing I also didn't mention in here too is we actually synchronize content um, to the Vercel builds, which means that every time uh, like you need to like do a rebuild of the site, it doesn't have to rebuild it all from scratch. It's actually, because it, it already has a copy of all the data for the site it already has. So when you rebuild the site, it's super fast. It's like within seconds, even if you do need to do a full rebuild. Um, and uh, oh, that, that, I accidentally put that one in there. <laughs> 
So if you do want to learn more, yeah, I highly recommend sign up for a free account. Um, join the Agility CMS Slack channel as well. Uh, that's on our website. Um, I'm in there all the time. Uh, you can follow at Agility CMS, and you can also follow me at James K. Riddler. Um, and yeah, that's my talk. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for having me. Uh, great. Thanks so much, James. That was that was awesome. Um, it looks like you still might be sharing your screen if you want. Okay, cool. Right, I just turned it off. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to tell you before you start checking your email or something. But um, no, that, that was awesome. Uh, I, I have some questions. That I just uh, want to open up the floor in case anyone else wanted to ask anything first. I had one. Sure. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah. Um, this is like only because you're in the room. It's not necessarily related to the presentation, but it is a question. Uh, I used to work in pre-sales and did like headless CMS uh, bake-offs or whatever, like way, way early. I'm wondering because I'm like out of the game by five years or something. Like <laughs> what, what does like the sales uh, landscape look like now? Like when you're like in a compete, when you're in a room, like with a lot of other, you know, like who who are your main competitors? Is it when you're going after an enterprise account? Is it still like uh, the boring big enterprise people? Is it now that there's so many like headless CMSs that you're all in every situation? Like what is that? Doesn't have, you don't have to go too deep, but I'm just curious because uh, that's that's, yeah. that's a it's a great question and like the there's like so uh, agility has actually been around for for a while since like 2008 and it's actually always been headless, uh, but it was never called headless back then because that wasn't really a buzzword. Um, so at that time, you know, we actually had a really unique model. Uh, I think we were probably one of the very few headless CMSs sort of even trying things at that point in time. Um, so at that time, we competed a lot with like bigger enterprise sort of like traditional CMSs. Um, like Sitecore was one and like, um, it was a site, uh, Sitecore, EpiServer. Um, and we also had a really tight integration with .NET for a long time. So we were like uh, going up against other like .NET based solutions. Um, but then yeah, over the last like five, five, five or seven years or so, um, headless has really picked up as like a thing, right? That people really want. Uh, I would say we missed the boat a little bit on capturing the market early, but we're <laughs> trying to catch up. Yeah. Um, at, at that time too, we actually weren't fully focused. On, we weren't fully focused as a product company. We were actually just building agility as like a uh, a way to manage content for our own customers. Like that's kind of how agility started. Um, but um, it's EpiService. So like now, now we're sort of going up against um, some of the larger enterprise headless CMSs out there. So like um, uh, Contentful, um, uh, San like uh, eh, not really Sanity. That's more developer focused. Um, but mainly, it's it's Contentful, uh, Strappy, Kentico Content. Uh, a lot of those sort of new players in the game over the last few years. Um, but yeah, like the reason why I really was drawn to Jamstack was because it was like a really elegant solution to building websites that rely on APIs to actually get all the content. Um, I don't know. Sorry, I kind of rambled there for a second. I don't really know if that did that entirely answer answer your question or. Yeah, yeah. I was just curious. I like the first time I heard of headless CMS, and we like had to demo it. Like I was on a team to build demos. I was like, what? I was so confused, and it was so early on. I, I don't even know who we were competing with at the time. But uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks for the info. Yeah, yeah. Like it's actually really funny how like I'm seeing a like we had done things a long time ago a certain way. Like we like I said, we always had a headless CMS, and like the, the way we actually got people to build websites with it is because people didn't really know how to call APIs back then. It was like so so complicated. And we we're talking like WCF, like these weird like Windows stuff. My, all this Microsoft technology you had to use to like communicate together. Um, so we built like a, a .NET integration that would synchronize your content for you. So every time you publish something in the CMS, we'd actually would send a webhook request to your web server and say, hey, take this new content. We got new content for you. And it would take that and save that as, um, we, we actually, at that time, we saved them as bu serialized binary files. Now we would do JSON, but at that time, that wasn't really the thing either. So then like the web server would have all that data it actually needs to render it. So it was still doing server, those websites were still doing server rendered, server rendering operations, but it never had to call home or make some external API request to generate the, the actual page HTML. It was still super fast. Um, 
And so like, no, when Jamstack came out, I was like, oh, that, that's a much smarter way to do that. But then now we're actually building in more tools into this, into our like a brand new sync endpoint. Like we have a sync API as well, and we're integrating that into our starters. So it's like now, like the whole idea of having a static Jamstack site is kind of evolving a little bit because we're going with the needs of our enterprise customers that are so used to things working a certain way in a traditional CMS that we're just finding ways to just make it work with Jamstack. So then that way developers are happy, editors are happy, and people who end up using the websites are happy. <laughs> uh, James, I had a question about, um, so you, you demoed um, a, a Next uh, stack uh, with Vercel. Yeah. Now, um, so I know Next has like the the dual kind of like duality of like full jam stack and then the server rendered stuff. And Vercel, obviously, um, since they're they're tied together, uh, allows for for uh, staging both of those types of builds. Um, so is is this live preview stuff? Is it dependent on Next.js and Vercel right now, or could you? Like, how would you do something like that with Gatsby that doesn't really have the server rendering um, side of things? Yeah. So with Gatsby, um, um, we've you know consulted our, our customer that ended up building sites with Gatsby to to do this is uh, make use of Gatsby Cloud if if you can because Gatsby Cloud will give you um, pretty much real time a real time preview environment. Um, and uh, so, like you know, like so, if you start with like our, our agility Gatsby starter, which has our source plugin, which kind of hand it has, is, which is able to support the, um, that preview environment, um, that's how you'd get instant previews with Gatsby. Um, now, publishing with Gatsby is still you're going to wait for a build. There's no if ands or buts around that. So you want to try to get um, just, um, what am I saying? Uh, Incremental builds, you can enable that um, in Gatsby Cloud, which can help. Uh, but that's also why we built a sync API and built that into all of our starters so that when you do need to do a fresh rebuild, it, you don't have to call home to our API to get all of the content because that just takes a long time, especially if you have like thousands of pages. Um, so all of that content actually gets stored uh, in JSON files actually is sort of in the Gatsby build. So the next time a build happens, it's, it's going to go call home to our, our sync API and say, hey, has anything changed since the last time I did a build? And, it, and our sync API will return what has changed. And it'll go, and then it'll update its, its source nodes, um, and then it'll be done as builds. So you know, with that, you're able to take take down, like, a, like let's say you have a site that has 1,000 pages you know, that was building over the course of, maybe it took like a minute and a half to build. You're able to take a, something for that to like you know, 15 seconds, as opposed to. So even doing like big publishes, yeah, it's, it's becoming less of an issue. Very cool, and and so would you also be able to hook this into something like Netlify's preview capability with like a Hugo site or something like that? We, or we that... actually we actually just uh, one of my colleagues just finished doing some work with Netlify because Netlify supported um, uh, yeah they never really supported like next preview environments because it is something like there is something that like the hosting vendor has to do on their end to allow that that to work. Sure. Um, and you know, Vercel did it obviously because it's their own platform and they want to be the, the ones to do it. And I think they purposefully just didn't want it, didn't didn't work with Netlify to help them figure it out. So for a while, Netlify was kind of like, I don't know, they're like, I don't, we don't know how to do Next.js previews. Uh, but one of my colleagues um, worked with one of their developer advocates to sort of get that in place. Uh, they had done something custom for another customer and we're helping them sort of get that up to snuff a little bit too, because you know, we like to give our customers options too, right? If they want to build their site on Next.js and host in Netlify, they should be able to do that and, you know, not be forced to um, choose a different provider. The other thing we've also recommended some people too is like, um, you can do all of these things uh, you're on your own if you use like Docker containers. So you could deploy a Next.js site um, to Azure or AWS uh, in a Docker container running in a certain way, and it'll essentially do the same thing. Yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, and I guess so. Netlify's previews are really just full builds anyway, so they're not giving you that real time kind of preview, yeah. I guess. So, um, yeah, yeah, okay, but they cool. but there should be but it sh they should have a like the native Next.js preview very soon, I think. If, oh, if, nice. if they don't already have it, um, but this is this is what we're seeing from like the developer advocate side of things is like it's starting to get complicated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like solving solving all these issues is starting to get a little like 
a little a, a little nutty, especially when like Next.js is updating their versions like every few weeks and you know changing how things work. And it's like, oh, but it was all working yeah. so well, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of one of the I think the criticism Jamstack in general. It's it's like a really fractured community in a lot of ways. But I think um, Next.js uh, is probably one of the, I think it is the maybe the most popular static site generator type project, um, although it does more than that. So you don't know how much of the market you're capturing in the Jamstack realm versus a different paradigm, but um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know if I was building my, like a, a, like either a product or, or, or website today, I would probably use Next.js. That, yeah. that would be my go-to, yeah. Makes sense. Very cool, any other questions? All right. Well, thank thank you guys for coming and presenting to the group, um, and thanks for everyone who who uh, participated and hung out and chatted about the stuff. I I always find it fascinating. It's cool to see like um, I feel like you know agility and Drupal. They seem like they're coming from very different realms, but there's a lot of crossover with the talk. And I thought um, it was pretty interesting that you're James. You're adding some slides from <laughs> Sam's presentation into yours. I think um, Anthony, who I think popped off the call, but. He he coined the term "just in time slides." <laughs> I thought that yeah, was pretty yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, I was, well, I saw it. I was like, man, like, I, I really, like, I really want to comment on this, but I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt him. So yeah, I'll just put that in my slides. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Um, great. All right. Well, thank you guys so much, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll see uh, one of these in the future. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye.